My name is Patricia Falcão, and uh, I'm a doctoral researcher at the Goldsmiths and Tate, looking at how um, artists and the gaming industry, uh, what, are, what they are doing to preserve their artworks. And this came from my role as a conservator at Tate for the last 12 years, where it, I was very aware that um, we have a tiny collection of 15 artworks. Um, so, and I know that most that any contemporary art museum has very small um, numbers of these types of artworks in their collections at the moment, but the works still survive. And most of the, that is happening because of, of artists themselves caring for their artworks. And so I was curious about that. Um, um, and so that's where my research comes from. And, and that's sort of my background is literally as a conservator working in a collecting institution with artists to, to collect that um, to collect that artworks and that means caring for them for the long term. Um, so the reason my presentation does not reflect um, the title that I used here is when I started trying to compare what software sustainability, um, how it related to software-based art conservation, I kept going back to, to research software and clearly there's lots of commonalities and lots of um, things that apply to either uh, there's some very key differences, but at some point I was like, okay, I'm making so many assumptions about research software that I know nothing about. So my my question for you all is, I'll just present what I do and how we think about sustainability um, or preservation, which is the term that we use. So it's a slightly different meaning, but not that far off. Um, and just see if, if it resonates with any of you, I would love to hear about that because that's something that I've been wanting to learn more about. I think there's a lot to learn from how you are addressing uh, research software in the Software Sustainability Institute and, and the community. So I would love to hear about that. So let's let's stop this and I'll show you, I'll start by showing you a couple of artworks just so you understand what I'm what I'm talking about. So this is the earliest piece in the collection. And it's from 2003. It's by the artist Michael Craig Martin. Um, it's a director executable, so it runs on Mac, uh, on OS X. It's, sorry, no, uh, Windows XP. And it's this little screen. It's a little bit bigger than a 4 and it's meant to hang on the wall as a painting. So the the size of the monitor is really important. The frame of the monitor is really important. And then what you see are, are the drawings that are sort of key to Michael's, uh, Michael Craig Martin's practice, and they just appear and disappear. And you need to be understand the context that this, this is 2003 and um, not so, nowadays technically really not that impressive, but it does represent this point in time. Now, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Let me just change to the next work. So this is the simplest piece we have. And I'm going to show you the most complex that we acquired a couple Sweet. of years back. Can you hear the sound? Sorry. Yes. Okay, oh, that's not what I did. So this is the other piece. This is the most compact piece we have. And just to sh give you a sense of what we're talking about here is besides the sculptural element of the puppet and the whole structure that holds the puppet is also part of the work. There's all these software systems that come together uh, so that there is this stable choreography of how the puppet moves and the eyes of the puppet follow people in the space. So you need to know when to move the puppet using the automation system or how to move the puppet with the automation system. There's some tracking of the visitors. There's a tracking of the location of the head so you can point the, the eyes. To, and then there's one central system that manages all of this. So um, when I first saw this work, I was like, oh my God, I'm not, I don't know how to go about it. And then, um, you know, as you start doing it, it just sort of becomes a bit simpler. This is a type of works. And, and now these works are being collected 
by the Tate, and Tate is a, a national institution in the UK um, and has some very clear, um, it's a very clear mission, which is to care for, preserve, are the key points here, for works of art. So that's what I'm collecting. We are collecting works of art and the software is sort of um, falls under the work of art rather than being the core. Um, and these works need to be exhibited to the public and they need to be available so, for study and research. Uh, the fact that these need to be exhibited to the public means that we need to accept a degree of change, you know, if for nothing else, because a monitor will fall, fail after a period of time um, or, you know, a, a, monitor, a, a computer will fail, a piece of any equipment will eventually fail. So we always need to plan, we plan for that. Um, and this, this need for change creates a little bit of a tension with the need for study or research, because it means that these are software systems that we need to change, but we also want to know what they were initially. So if a, a work is created with director, um, we want to know that, even if eventually we need to change it to something else. Uh, and that's what it means for an artwork to be displayed in perpetuity. I mean, I, I, I always cringe when I hear perpetuity in this context because I wouldn't, you know, the investment to do that is um, scary, but that's our aim. And so the, the way we do that is sort of trying to understand what an artwork is in all its contexts. So, and that usually means bringing together factors such as you know, what computer is being, the, the, the hardware and mostly the computers that are being used, very important are all the peripherals because they can be really uh, unusual. But there's also a lot of um, information that you need to know about the display space, how something is being shown in the galleries. And then it's it's just another one almost, of, I mean, it's, it's more than just another one, but it's another of those element, elements is the software. Uh, or the media or the data, which, whatever you need for an artwork to, to be, be rerun. And all of that is, is subordinate to some conceptual element. So one example here is um, for some works, a computer may be just something that is hidden behind a wall. And some works, this computer is right at the center of an artwork and it, it can't be changed. So the value of these different elements will vary greatly from work to work, and it's only dependent on, on or mostly dependent on what an artist thinks about that. Uh, so I'll, I went for the simple work just because the other one would take me 10 minutes just to list everything. Um, in this case, what we received from the artist was a computer that is built into the monitor. It had the director executable installed, and then we worked with the artist and the the developer who worked with the artist, artist to receive the lingo code that was used for the project. Um, and then we also received some software to, uh, to assess the speed of the fade, because even in, to, in 2003, we, when the work was acquired, we already knew that there were issues with the um, processors accelerating how things happened. And so um, the developer uh, kindly built uh, a piece of software so that we could measure that. And this is a pretty um, default acquisition. So we usually have a piece of software that is in a computer ready to be run in the gallery rather than having to build the systems ourselves. Uh, of course, we don't create the software at all. By the time we receive something, it's usually seen as done. And our input into how it's built is, is very small. Um, if anything, I may ask for something extra that might make something more sustainable. For instance, if we are being uh, provided with, a, uh, with an executable file or an application, I can ask to receive an application for Windows and for Linux, for instance, rather than just having one or actually for Mac and Windows, uh, rather than just having one for Mac, that makes things much more complicated. So, but there's, it's very limited. By the time we see it, the software is what it is. Uh, also, there's a very limited number of instances. Uh, these, these works come into the collections, they're either unique, or you may have like editions of up to five, but not more than that. 
um, the code is completely custom, or, or sorry, not completely. It's, there's always a custom element to it. Um, sometimes it's, it's not, it, it's a lot of commercial code and then customized in some way. Uh, the code may be written by the artists themselves, but some work, some work with one collaborator and, and have long-term relationships with, with their collaborator, and some, have, and some artists work with whole production teams or with external suppliers themselves. Uh, and the other aspect here is that peripherals, peripherals are often non-standard. I mean, it doesn't get much more non-standard than a puppet being thrown around in the gallery. But in the end, you know, they all depend on, on the small number of connectors and, and interfaces, so it's not so bad. So the way we deal with this is any work that comes into the collection is thoroughly analyzed and documented. So we need to understand exactly what the system is. Um, we also recommend that there's a thorough analysis of the source code whenever possible. At date, we don't do this very often unless it's really necessary. We have very little experience of that, but uh, Professor Dina Hengel at uh, New York University, for instance, has published a lot on that. Um, we also do a risk assessment about the, for the long-term preservation of each artwork, which flags things that we know we can do now to prevent, to, to make intervention later on easier, besides digital storage and you know, the classical things that you do for digital objects. Um, so again, there is always, a thorough documentation of all the different aspects of the work and not just the software. Uh, and then we create preservation elements at the point of acquisition. So, so the first time we encounter work, that look, this is how the documentation looks like. So we think about the production history, technical specifications. Um, uh, one unusual thing is actually the user experience and the function of the work or the functionality of the work itself. In terms of videos, should I stop? Yeah, is that okay? Sorry. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I can stop there, actually. I was just going to show you this. 